Bob Maloney from MyMMANews.com. And once again, I am joined by my guy, Dylan Harnish. Dylan and I talk frequently because the guy loves to fight frequently. He's got a title fight coming up on August 28th at Stellar Fights. And Dylan, you just got done training, my man. Just want to check in, see how you're feeling. What's going on, man? What's going on in your young, crazy, vibrant mind right now thinking about this fight? Uh, I'm just excited. Uh, I just left the gym. You know, I got put through the Shark Tank today. Uh, fresh person every minute. You know, I got beat up a little bit, but uh, it's nothing that's going to be worse than what happens in the cage. So, you know, I'm ready for that. And I feel like since I was like 19 years old, I've been telling you that I'm going to I'm going to be fighting for a title. I'm going to bring home a title back to the gym. And, you know, uh, the 28th is when I finally get to do that. Listen, this is a big step. I mean, step by step, it's one fight at a time in this sport. It's a cool sport. I mean, you can get hurt or lose a fight and it could change everything. And this is really the first, you know, you're fighting for a title, like you said. So talk to me a little bit about your opponent, Loomis and Gene. I know he's fought a couple times at Stellar Fight, so there is some film on him. Do you even care at this point, or do you just go in there and say, you know what, let him worry about me? Do you want to check out and see the competition? I mean, it's still so early in your, in your career. I'm sure, you know, as you progress, there'll be more film on, on future opponents. But, you know, how do you guys attack that? So when I was like 18 or 19, I'd be every second I was on my phone, I'd be watching, I'd be watching film, studying film and uh, thinking about, well, if he does this, I'll do this. And, you know, just so much added stress that you don't need. Um, I'm at the point now where this is going to be my 12th fight um, across kickboxing, MMA and boxing. So uh, it doesn't really matter who's there. I did. I watched I watched his fights like once or twice on Stellar. Um, nothing like super impressive. You know, I think I think I can dictate how this fight plays out. Um I came in wrestling heavy in my last fight, uh, so you know if I could keep it on the feet and end this one early, then uh, that's definitely going to be the plan. Well, listen, you said this is your twelfth overall fight in combat sports. Tell me where you think in those twelve fights, where's the most that you have grown? What's what area do you think that you you know that you've improved the most in? Uh, definitely my ground game. Um, I you know when you're a kid, you're punching each other's cool, right? So. I didn't like not that I didn't focus enough on the jiu-jitsu, but I didn't pay attention to the fine details and things where it's like, oh, you do this half guard pass, get to this butterfly sweep, and so on and so forth. It's nothing that interests me. But now it's like uh, everything Eric says, I'm just wide eyed and looking, you know, where his foot goes here, where his hand goes here, and uh, I feel like I've really improved. And uh, my last fight, I went out there and I I controlled the fight. You know, I took it to the ground twice. Uh, I got a knockdown in the third round. He. He, he asked me what like if I wanted to keep wrestling uh, George and I'm like, yeah, you know, it's going well. Uh, let's just see how, how I feel, you know, wrestling in an actual fight with all the nerves and everything going on. And like, I think I improved there. I don't know that I could have done that in my MMA debut or even the fight after that. So it's definitely I improved a lot on my ground game. What about what about your, you, you, you know, listen, you come into this sport and, and you know, you, you start off for two or three minute rounds, depending on what state you're fighting in. And, you know, it really doesn't sound like a lot, but in the beginning when you start fighting, I'm sure it seems a lot longer. How about your cardio? How have you attacked your cardio as far as getting it to the point now where you're happy and that, you know, because you want to progress. You're hoping to, you know, to eventually go pro, which is five minute rounds. How have you, uh, you know, increased or changed your, your, your cardio training? So this will be my first uh, three-minute round, actually, um, in Delaware. Uh, I think if Brad called me the Friday before my fight and said, we're changing the round to five minutes, I, I wouldn't complain. Um, I don't know that my opponent would be like, okay with it, let's do it. Um, I just – my cardio is something that I, I pride myself on. You've seen that in my first ever fight when I was 18 years old. And, uh, you know, there hasn't been many times where I've, I've been tired or, like, in the gym, it's all the time. But uh, just running and, you know, getting – these shark tanks and these hard ass rounds where people are just on top of me, beat me up and I got to work out bigger guys, guys, my size. And it's just, I run a lot and, uh, I don't know. I pride myself on my cardio. So whether someone's better than me at fighting, uh, I know that they're not going to be where I'm at cardiovascularly in the third round. Um, so that, that helps me with my confidence that if I'm getting beat up for two rounds, I'm still going to be there in the third and they might not be. 
One of the things that this last Art of War 19 that me and Eugene Suitcase Kid Aubrey was, was talking about was, you know, predictability. And we're seeing more and more fighters, you know, switch from southpaw to, you know, to the traditional right-handed stance. You're a natural southpaw. Do you dabble in that at all, switching stances, or do you stay? You think you stay? Do you try to be unpredictable, maybe switch it up, or do you just like to stay with your southpaw stance all the time? Um, I like I like to move. I like to switch. Uh, actually, in my last fight, he threw a or I threw a body kick, and I think he came charging in with a Superman punch, and I missed and took a step back into the orthodox stance, and I landed like a lead left hook from orthodox, and that's what rocked him. And then I followed up, like went back to southpaw and uh, marched him down and landed like two or three left hands that actually finally put him down. Um, but I like to move. It's a lot. It's a lot more frustrating when people are trying to make reads when you're southpaw and. Uh, then two seconds later, you're orthodox, and it's, it's a lot more difficult. And I don't know that a lot of people are able to do that. So that I'm like, luckily, I'm enough, like, good enough to do that and able to do it. So I'm definitely going to use it as an advantage. Absolutely, man. You got to have every tool possible, and you're still so young in this game and improving, and 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 you, and you got it, and in, in, you know, you got involved so early. So, you know, what do you think? Talk talk to me about this fight. Is it going to go the distance? You're going to knock him out. Is it going to be a submission? You are one of my favorites to talk to because you were a little bit on the crazy side and a little bit, you know. You, you have personality, and you're also not afraid to make some predictions. So talk to me about, you know, the trouble that you think your opponent is in. What's, what's going to happen in the fight? You've called his fights before, right? Yes. I think we both know what's going to happen. He leaves his chin out there, and eventually I'm going to connect. He's a little weird. Uh, I'm not going to lie. And I do struggle with more green people. Not that he's green. He's ha- He has four or five fights, but uh, he fights stupid. And... Uh, Eric always says, like, I'm the stupidest person in the gym. Like, nothing I, like, do makes sense, and somehow it still works. So I think he's going to go out there and try to match my stupid, and I just don't think that he could change and go back to being technical like I can. Uh, so I think eventually after a minute or two, I'm going to make my reads, and uh, I think I'm going to get him away late in the first or early in the second. I really do like the three-minute rounds because I tend to start late. Or, and uh, so, I, you know, I hope I could not start late and – get out of there real quick but uh, definitely i see once i make the reads uh his chin's gonna be up and he's been rocked in a couple fights and i think when i land it's not it's not the same as debut guys landed on you well listen this fight's at 45 has it been a pretty easy weight cut and and the reason i'm asking you that is because you know i want the next part of the question is when you eventually go pro will it be at 35 or 45 because that's a, such a big step right there. So talk to me about this weight cut. Has it been pretty much easy for you since it's 45? And when you do make that move to 35, does Eric and yourself think, do you think it, that will happen and move to 35 when you do eventually go to a professional? So I've been working a lot with uh, Eric Pena. He's a nutritionist for uh, Anthony Pettis and Dustin Poirier and all the big names. And uh, I was grandfathered in before he worked with Dustin for the uh, Connor fight. Um, and he, he honestly didn't want me even making 140. So last fight was the first time I worked with him and I haven't made 140 for a while. I was taking fights at 45 and you know, those last five pounds, it doesn't sound like much, but it's a lot. Um, and I started working with him and he's like, I'll get you to 140, but I don't think you should go any lower than 145 in your amateur career. So I think, uh, I'm going to fight for order wars title at 145 in October as well. Um, and after those two fights are done, we'll see, you know, if I win both of those fights, take home a title, maybe defend one of them and then make the next step. And I'll have to, you know, sit down with my nutritionist and see if he thinks 35 is a good idea. His main thing is not not killing myself to make weight when they're not even paying me to make weight. So I think once all that gets figured out and uh, they start paying me to make 135, then, you know, I think I'll convince them to get me there. Well, that's been, it's going to be worth a suffering if you're getting paid. I completely understand that different world all right before we go give some shout outs or some love to anybody you want Dylan. and it's all yours man i know you've been you know working hard and you got people supporting you so give some shout outs so this is uh cold region boxing he actually cornered me for two of my boxing fights with eric uh in atlas pa i've been working with him uh for a couple years now just working on the boxing and stuff uh he's a retired pro boxer and uh just everyone back at the gym you know zach banner slices back teaching mma classes on thursdays uh lauren and eric will be in my corner again all my training partners it's been a long time coming. You know, uh, I've been wanting to put a belt around Eric and celebrate in the cage and hang it up in the gym and, you know, walk around with 
two big fancy belts from uh, Stellar and show everyone in my family, my girlfriend, you know, I let them all hold it, have fun with it. And uh, I'm excited. You know, I've been telling you for a while that a belt is coming and uh, finally I get to follow up on that promise. Well, Dylan, like I said, man, enjoy following your career. I always appreciate talking to you. You're a fun fighter to watch. You're, you're fun to talk to. Best of luck, best of skills at your title fight at Stellar on the 28th. And I'll be following. And uh, let's talk soon afterwards. And hopefully you are on that uh, a card after that soon. And I'll be calling it again like you were before. So once again, Dylan Harnish, 145-pound title at Stellar Fights on August 28th in Delaware. And uh, he, he's a name to, to watch in the sport. He's, uh, he's exciting. And uh, he brings it, man. He brings it all the time. Dylan. Take care, brother. Thank you. You too.